Good afternoon, and uh, yeah, my name is Naok Song, and uh, yeah, I used to work uh, with Demos from 1993 to 1999, and uh, it was one of the, my <coughs> best time entire my life. Uh, yeah, and uh, today I'm going to talk about backup algorithm for random access protocols, and uh, compared to the uh, morning talks, uh, my talk will be quite simple and uh, easy to understand. So. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Yeah, I have been working on this problem with Byung Jae Kwak, who happened to be my husband. And uh, he graduated from University of Michigan too. I'm gonna overview random access protocol, even though everybody here would know to continue my talk. And, uh, and then I'm going to talk about the exponential backup algorithm, which is the main talk will be, and uh, I'm going to talk about its uh, stability and the performance analysis and the optimization. And then using the same analysis technology, I just uh, showed the performance result of the IEEE 802.11 DCF, which is Wi-Fi. And uh, I tried to enhance the IEEE 802.11 Mac uh, with uh, the advanced uh, Bag of algorithm, which is proposed uh, uh, long ago. And then uh, at the end, I'm going to show you the recent work, but uh, I'm going to just mention it without showing any result. And uh, it's a different uh, view of uh, the bag of algorithm. And uh, everybody knows uh, the random uh, access protocol starts with pure aloha, and then it moves to the slotted aloha. So it's pretty simple. Later, it goes to the many other protocols, but I omit everything except the mainstream. And then, so mainstream goes to the carrier sensing multiple access. Yeah, carrier sensing. Like we all talk, we sense whether other talks or not. Similarly here, carrier sensing, we sense. And if a channel is idle, then we transmit. If a channel is very then we keep listening. That's simple way. So basically, you just listen until channel is idle. Then you get a chance to transmit. So uh, here, someone tried with one persistent uh, uh, carrier sensing multiple access, uh, which means whenever there is a chance, you transmit with the priority one. With the P persistent uh, carrier sensing multiple access algorithm, Whenever there is a chance, you transmit with the probability P. And then there is the non-persistent CSMA, which means when there is a channel become idle, then instead of sending right away, you wait random amount of time, which is my talk today. So I'm going to talk about the, this random access protocol. So whenever there is a channel is busy, wait a random amount of time, and then sense the channel again. Also, if a collision occurs, then wait another random time. And then it improved a little bit more with the collision detection. It was used for the LAN, uh, IEEE 802.3. And uh, as you know, that it's the same thing. First, you sense the channel. If the channel is busy, then keep listening. And if the channel becomes idle, then you can transmit a packet immediately with the probability one, and then go to step two. But if detection occurs, then you stop transmitting and then wait a random amount of time. At that time, this random amount of time was calculated from the truncated binary exponential backup algorithm. I'm going to explain a little bit later, more detail. So, and uh, for the, this uh, IEEE 802.3, we used the minimum contention window size one and the maximum contention window size uh, 1024, and the number of retransmission uh, of 15 was allowed. So, some of you may not know about what is uh, contention window size. So when you pick the random amount of time of waiting, 
this is the number you use. For example, if uh, contention window size is uh, 1024, then you pick number from 0 to 1023 uniformly. Then weigh that amount of slot time. Then you have a chance to transmit. So for example, if you have a minimum window size, then you choose just one, which means you send it right away. So because of a minimum window size is one, then we have a capture effect. Capture effect means that uh, actually someone found that the network had very high performance. So it seems to be working perfectly, but later he learned only one node captured the entire network. So which was not good. So later we improved for the uh, Wi-Fi. And the Wi-Fi could not use the collision detection. So instead uh, it used the collision avoidance. This is just the same mechanism. You just keep listening the channel a little more time. For case of Wi-Fi, they listen the channel DIFS time. So at the time, same truncated binary exponential backup algorithm was used for the retransmission. But here, instead of minimum contention window size one, we used the 32. That way, we were able to avoid the capture effect, not entirely, but fairly. So in the case of Wi-Fi, instead of 15 times of retransmission, it allowed only seven. I'm gonna explain a little bit more detail about the carrier sensing multiple access with the collision avoidance because all of my analysis was based on the, this uh, Wi-Fi wi mechanism. So first in step one, first we sense the channel. If the channel is busy, then we have to keep listening until channel got idle. So at least we have to listen DIFS because this is the uh, collision avoidance mechanism. So we listen and then channel busy. And then once channel got idle, we have to listen the channel at least DIFS time. And then if the channel is keep idling, then now we are able to back off. So each node has a back off timer. For example, you have a back off timer at seven. Then from this time, you could de decrease your back off timer one by one. Each slot time, you could decrease your timer. So once your uh, back off timer expires, then you have a chance to transmit your packet. Uh, when the collision detects, then you use a truncated BB. So here, here is some example. So station A send a packet. Now we all listen DIFS time, and then channel still got idle. Then station A pick the random amount of name uh, back of timer seven. Then it starts with the seven. The other B and C start with the five and three. And uh, after three slots later, and uh, station C, the bag of timer got expired, then it has a chance to transmit the packet. But during this uh, transmission, other nodes bag of timer just uh, freeze, not decreasing their bag of timer. Once uh, its transmission is completed, then after another DIFS time, they have a chance to retransmit or decrease their back of timer. Similarly, we have this kind of mechanism. Now we are ready to talk about the back of algorithms. First, I got interested in this back of algorithm because I started working on the mobile ad hoc network. And the mobile ad hoc network, as you know, that it's a distributed system. So we need a distributed Mac. So I searched the distributed Mac. Back then, it happened we only had a Wi-Fi Mac 
for the adult. So I got interested in. So actually, my project didn't require, require me work on this, this type of research. But I was so curious. So I started from the pure aloha from the beginning. I, I took the course with the Timos. So I know for sure, but at the time, I just <coughs> took the course without any philosophy or anything. Just I took the course. But this time, I started with my heart. And uh, I was able to remember things what Timos said. And uh, some of them I knew back then, but some of them I realized it much later. So I started uh, and all these things, uh, pure aloha, and then slatito aloha, and then everything. And then I got into this uh, bag of algorithm, binary exponential bag of algorithm. And then I looked and looked, and uh, it doesn't seem to be right because it doesn't look good to me. So, <laughs> so actually, I hated Wi-Fi back then, and I thought that it's going to be ended pretty soon, and the new technology will come. <laughs> Still, but Wi-Fi got more popular nowadays. And uh, later, I learned this uh, binary exponential backup got popular not because it has a good performance, but because it's uh, simple to be implemented. So it has a good aspect of engineering. So today I'm going to show you some of the results out of my curiosity. <laughs> so, and uh, basically this exponential back of algorithm, this kind of back of algorithm is so-called contention resolution algorithm because we try to minimize the contention among nodes and also we try to maximize channel utilization. So basically, at first, I worked on the original binary exponential back of algorithm. Basically, what this says is we start with the minimum contention window size, and then we retransmit infinite times. Whenever there is a collision, you double or you, uh, uh, you times uh, R, which is a backup timer, and then you just keep increasing, keep increasing. So this is original uh, backup algorithm, which cannot be used for real world. So this is the practical version of original binary exponential backup algorithm. So same thing, we start with the minimum contention window size. So whenever there is a success, wait a minute, okay. Whenever there is a success, you start with the minimum in contention window size. Also, you start with this same minimum contention window size when you fail to transmit and drop your packet. It's nonsense. <laughs> and uh, uh, of course, if there is a collision, then you have to double for the binary exponential case for the just exponential back of algorithm case, you just multiply by R. So this figure shows how it works. So once you reach the maximum, you just keep stay here until you drop your packet or until you succeed your transmission. So, and then I got interested in whether it is stable or not. So, and then I looked the definitions. So I found the throughput definition. So it means backup algorithm is stable if throughput does not converge to zero as the load goes to infinity. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. There was another definition and the delay. So backup algorithm is stable if delay is bounded. I looked at literature and whether others worked. So I found the paper by Kelly and McPhee. And I know they are real good. And they said the throughput of BB goes to zero. This BB means original BB. For arrival rate, for 
larger than log 2. And their paper was really, really hard to understand. But I read it. And then still, I couldn't get it. And then I looked more, and I found another paper of elders. And uh, it says, uh, average throughput of BB goes to zero for any non-zero arrival rate. Hmm, different result. And uh, also I found uh, some other result. And uh, Hested said that the BB is unstable when the arrival rate is too large under <coughs> delay definition. So two of them use throughput definition, one used the delay definition. And uh, I kept I kept talking up, talking. And uh, I found more paper. Goodman said that BB is stable if the arrival rate of a system is sufficiently small under delay definition. Hmm. Something different. <laughs> and also there is another result that uh, uh, it says uh, improve the result. Uh, uh, yeah, this uh, L. Emmer improved the, uh, his conference paper, and then got say, uh, he said that uh, it is uh, upper bounded of arrival rate. Uh, something is missing. I'm sorry about it. Anyway. I got all mixed result, uh, and uh, I got more curious. Uh, so, and then I analyzed uh, their result. Uh, so, they used a different definition. Some used throughput definition, and uh, the other used de delay definition. And then I looked at their analysis model. They had to simplify or modify their uh, analysis model to uh, get their result. So, I found that this uh, one and two. Uh, use the infinite node model, and uh, and also two, three, four, five, six use the peer persistent like uh, model, uh, which is a memory list. So the reason we got the all mixed result because we all use the different definition of network load first. Then what is the real meaningful definition of a network load, whether number of nodes or arrival rate. So basically what we learn is analysis model is really important. So I figured we have to find the right model which could give us a result is useful for the real world. I go back to the first place. What is the purpose of exponential bank of algorithm? So exponential bag of algorithm is uh, we try to get the efficient utilization of a channel by regulating the contention among nodes. Hmm. Which means uh, throughput definition is more meaningful than delay definition because we would like to utilize our channel. So I decided that throughput definition for the stability. And also, I figured instead of arrival rate, the network load, which is number of nodes, is important. But I'm not talking about the number of nodes, which is not transmitting anything at all. Here, the number of nodes means the number of active nodes, which has a packet to transmit. So you may say that uh, this is, uh, uh, even though you have uh, 200 nodes for the Internet of Things, maybe there is only a few nodes transmitting. Then here, a few nodes is the network load. So we consider the saturation condition. Every node has always have some package to transmit. Then the, the number of nodes existing there could be the active node. Also, we use the slotted transmission. That way, we were able to use the Markov chain to analyze. So this is the result. So I skipped all the mathematics. And uh, I worked on the probability of transmission and the probability of collision and all other things. And then I was able to get the result of a probability of success. And it gives me very nice form of result, and I liked it. And uh, no matter 
what the minimum contention window size, it converges to this number. So this graph is for the case of binary exponential back of algorithm. So this is one over two L N two. So which means it that the throughput doesn't go to zero, which means stable, blah blah. So I loved it. But the one that we have to use in the real world, which is truncated BLB, it goes to zero, the throughput goes to zero. So the one we are really using in the wireless LAN or LAN or 15, uh, I, I, I AAA 02.15.4, they are all unstable. With the uh, analysis, uh, we were able to optimize the exponential back of algorithm. So when here r equal this number, we are able to reach the maximum slope. So this is the result that I got from my curiosity. So I, when I published this, we submit this to the transaction on networking. At that time, we got the mixed result from the reviewer. And uh, some really liked it. And then some said, it is solid work, but it's not a hot topic. <laughs> <laughs> so, so finally, editor decided to read it. And then he said, this is really solid result, and they have to publish it. So it was published. And then, and then, since then, it is a steady seller, even still. <laughs> so, and also after uh, Internet of Things got popular, and the people would like to work on the M2M or T2D, and uh, they looked and uh, got the result. And uh, so, still every year, yeah, we got more reference and references. So, yeah, we are very happy to see increasing the referred numbers. So, uh, yeah, we are very happy about it. And uh, we do the same technique of analysis we apply to uh, the Wi-Fi case, and we analyze it, and we were able to get the throughput analysis and uh, delay analysis. And then, as I said, I was not happy with the binary exponential back of algorithm because uh, it is not good. But I knew its value because it is really simple to be implemented. So I wanted to find a quite simpler one, but with better performance. So I searched, and uh, I first looked at uh, uh, its problem. Basically, new packet doesn't use uh, network history. And it only favors recently successful nodes. That's not fair. And also, it has very poor performance on the heavy network load. And also, as I said, it doesn't give any good performance, but it is really simple. So I looked at the similar technology, and I found mild. Some of you already know what is mild. Mild means, and I think it was at first popular, but later many found it has some default. Because the, uh, it, uh, in the case of success, it decreased contention size by one, and on collision, it multiplied by 1.5. So it looks like it's working. In general, it works very well on the very heavy network load. But remember, here, when you have a successful transmission, you decrease your contention in those sides by one. So which means if your network condition become from heavy to light, you do not have much chance to transmit, which means you do not have much chance of successful transmission. You cannot reduce your contention in those sides. So here is the for example. So when we have increasing factor two and the, oh, this is something different. Okay, yeah. 
So it has some defect, and so this is my idea to replace the binary exponential backup algorithm. So uh, when we have a collision, we multiply by Ri. But when we have a succeed and we divide by Rd, so basically we call it exponential increase, exponential decrease backup algorithm. Because, so this way, uh, to get to the minimum contention window size case, by the exponential case, we need only one successful transmission, then you will get the minimum contention window size. But for the mild case, we need, uh, for, the, for minimum window case 16 and the maximum is 1024, to reach the minimum contention window for mild, we need over a thousand successful transmission. <coughs> so if your traffic become heavy to light, then you hardly reduce your contention window size, which means even though you don't have to back off, you have to back off because of huge contention window size. But EIED case, you need only maximum of 12 successful transmission because you decrease your contention window size exponentially. So at first, we just did a simulation to see the result. As you can see, for the case of small node numbers, and look here, mild does not function very well. And but EIED is as good as BEB. And for the heavy load case, and the BEB is not functioning very well, but mild and EIED is good. And then later, we started analyzing. Look, this, uh, this is very early version. So here, we use the increasing factor of two, but decreasing factor is relatively similar to increasing factor. We just uh, use the little smaller ones. But the, after we optimize this EIED, we learned this decreasing factor is much, much smaller than increasing factor. And uh, so this is the sum of result. As you can see, this M is the step to reach maximum contention in those size. N is the number of steps you reach from here to here. So, R, uh, the increasing factor becomes R decreasing factor to the n. So, and this is the result, and uh, we, uh, m equals 6, has a smaller variance with respect to, to n. Look at here, they are close, and uh, when the whole step is uh, small, then uh, we have uh, higher, uh, 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 bigger variance with respect to n. So, in the case of packet size is 1024, we had m step 6 and n become like this. So probably this is the best case. So depending on the traffic condition, we could optimize EIED. And even though you do not optimize this EIED, it gives a much higher performance than uh, BEB. So I thought that uh, somebody uh, who's working on the standardization could pick this idea, but nobody picked. So I picked again, and I started working on again. And then basically, and uh, I have been working on TCP Mac since then. And uh, one of the things that I recognize is that there is a things that we could uh, utilize in the distributed map. And uh, the state is composed of idle time and collision in progress, and also, also successful transmission in progress. So all those bag of algorithm I have been talking about is based on technology based. So you use the only collision history. So 
I figured we could use more information through the channel. So I started using the channel condition. So how come we measure the channel condition? One of the idea is that we could use idle time because here efficiency means the time spending for transmitting divided by elapsed time. So to reduce the idle time, we could reach a higher efficiency. So we try to use idle time. So nowadays, uh, we are using the idle time for have a bag of algorithm. One of the good things about this is that the, when we use uh, ECHO-based bag of algorithm, it can be used for only unicast. You send the data, you have the acknowledgement. But for the case of multicast and the broadcast, we cannot use ECHO-based bag of algorithm. So nowadays, uh, we are working on the D2D communication algorithm. And uh, for the case of D2D, you need to have a fully distributed system, which means you need fully distributed synchronization mechanism. So the, for, for the distributed sync mechanization, this uh, idle time-based back of algorithm can be used. So right now, we are working on the paper to write down the distributed synchronization mechanism. So for whom uh, is interested in the distributed synchronization mechanism using the idle time, and uh, please come and see me, and uh, we, uh, I could provide some of the materials uh, to talk to. And uh, uh, thank you very much, and uh, for your <laughs> But they will become known if the network uses them, so they can be attacked subsequently. So you can think of, okay, there's this link, this power station that hasn't generated anything because it's a reserve power station. Suddenly it gets